You're watching the community MMA. Oh my goodness, what a night it was last night at UFC 293. A lot of things we expected to happen, uh, but some things we didn't expect to happen on a big scale. And that's the biggest UFC uh, championship upset of all time. Now, I don't know what the odds and everything, if that's exactly true, but it's, if not, it's pretty darn close. Sean Strickland went in and on the road, hostile environment, everybody there, well, no, I won't say everybody, let's say 85 to 90% uh, of the people there are rooting for Adesanya, but I'd say 95% of the world expected Adesanya to win. And Sean Strickland went in there and stole the belt. I mean, this guy absolutely stole the belt last night. Yes, and new. And man, I was pumped up last night. Raspy voice and all. Nearly one in the morning. And just couldn't believe it. And it wasn't even uh, close. 49-46. Just absolutely a dominating performance by Sean Strickland. But this is how it sounded as it happened live. Sean Strickland is walking around the octagon like this thing is already a victory, man. And what a performance by Sean Strickland. I mean, to me, he dominated this fight. 111 to 97 in significant strikes. Head strikes, 77 to 24. I mean, that that's the fight right there. Body shots, 29, 28. Izzy had a lot of leg strikes to keep it close, but that doesn't work in the judges' scorecards. 45 to 5 for Izzy, but they weren't really big. I mean, Sean Strickland dropped him in round one, ended up leading round by round, probably except round two. It's going to be 49-46 in my opinion. In the last 20 seconds, Sean Strickland is talking crap. And we just witnessed the biggest upset in championship history. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And both guys standing in the center of the octagon. And we're about to ha hear and new in a second. Wow. Adesanya knows he lost. Oh my gosh. It's unanimous. 49-46. Woo! Unbelievable. And new! Let's go! Wow, bro. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. At one point, you had Israel Adesanya, Kamara Usman, Francis Ngannou rule the top three divisions. And now you got three Americans up there. Sean Strickland, middleweight champion. Jamal Hill relinquished a belt, but he's still listed as a champion. And John Jones, heavyweight champion. Unbelievable. Sean Strickland walked into New Zealand and beat Israel Adesanya. Unbelievable. In dominating fashion. In dominating fashion, bro. You know, and I can't stand losing the uh, main event. I pride myself on the main event. And what are we, 23 and 9 on the year? Sliding a little bit, but the win streak is broke. But if it's going to be broke, and we're going to lose a main event, that's the one you want to lose when there's a new champion. And a few of those nine uh, uh, wrong picks on the year were because we've had several upsets. Alexa Grasso defeated Shevchenko. Now you had this. You've had other upsets. I mean, it's just it's a phenomenal year, 2023. And there's still three months to go. I mean, just a phenomenal year. But now what happens in the middleweight division? Because now you got Sean Strickland. I don't know if Adesanya gets a rematch this time because it was just a dominating performance. It wasn't like a, a fifth-round KO by P uh, Pereira where Adesanya could have won the fight if he just held on, but he didn't. So he gets the rematch and wins it. This time he got dominated. Now I think you get Dreykus Duplessis fight Sean Strickland. What if Hamza dominates... Paulo Costa, does he jump up? Is he more in line? So the middleweight division has a lot of questions to answer.
And trust me when I tell you right now, Hamza is coming. This man is coming. And now it's wide open. I really wanted to see Adesanya win this fight and be at the top when Hamza got up there. But, I mean, can't take anything away from Sean Strickland after that performance. Then you had Ty Tuavasa. Crowd favorite, taking on Alexander Fokal. Check this out. Boy, and Tuavasa really trying to hold on here to get to the end of the round. 40 seconds left now. Oh, and you got a triangle. Oh, and Tuavasa is trying to fight the hips, but he's in... He's got to get to the hands. Yeah. Volkov's got it tight here, man. Tuavasa wasn't fighting the hands. He was fighting the hips. Not a good idea. And he taps and that's it. Dang. And the crowd is silent. Come on, man. Ty Tuavasa falls. And he's struggling as of late. No shooey tonight. No shooey tonight. Alexander. And we got guys falling all over the place in the predictions last night. You'll see in a minute. I don't want to say terrible, but definitely a bad night for the predictions. And it didn't start well. We started 0-3. But stay tuned for that. You also had Justin Taffa look really, really good last night. Also, Lane shows him back. Ooh, misses on a head kick. Now he backs off. He takes a right. Boy, and this crowd's ready to get fired up. And a nice leg kick backs off Austin Lane. So Taffa now returning some leg kicks. Austin Lane with the reach. Ooh, Lane takes a right and a left. He goes down. Top was on top. He's pounding away. And that's it, man. This crowd is going to go crazy tonight, bro. <laughs> uh, and I already knew Austin Lane was done when Justin Toppa came out to Country Roads. I mean, I knew my pick was done when he came out to John Denver, man. But Justin Toppa... Getting the job done. He wins again. Extends a winning streak. He's going to move to 7-3. and three. And three hometown favorites have won in a row here in New Zealand. Yeah, but that would end in the final two fights. Right? Hometown favorites were dominating. But then Adesanya and Tai Tuavasa fell. So that came to a quick end. But before it came to an end, you also had Tyson Pedro get off last night. Ooh, and a big right hand by Pedro. Pedro's looking for the finish. And a body kick. And things settled down here. Three minutes left. First round. But that got the crowd lifted up quickly. Ooh, and a big right by Pedro. Now he takes a left knee and lands a big right. Turkal goes down. Oh, he finishes him. Let's go. Let's go. Tyson Pedro, baby. Let's go. Let's go, baby. And the comeback was on at that point. We started out 0-3. We're going to get into all that in a moment. Then we start coming back and getting a bunch of picks right. And then we're back to, I think, 5-5 five and five before the final two. So I was pumped up, that, uh, pumped up after the Pedro fight for sure. So I'm like, okay, we can we can salvage this night. This night could be salvaged. But it wasn't. It wasn't. This is how it went down at UFC 293, 5 and 7 on the night. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Started out 0 and 3 with Blood Diamond falling. Shane Young falling. Kiefer Crosby fell. Then we get two of the next three. We get uh, Malarkey and Hack Barast, okay? But Jack Jenkins fell. So now we're two and four in the in the prelims. Then three and four with Olberg. Then we're back to four and four with Pedro. Lane falls. We're four and five. Manel Cop wins. We're five and five. And I'm like, okay, we got we got Adesanya. So we're at least six and six. But instead, two of us and Adesanya fell. And it made for a rough night, five and seven. But we're still 23 and nine in the main event and 246 and 139 and three overall. So we're still looking okay. Uh, for sure, we, we built up a nice base throughout the year, but man, we haven't had this bad of a pay-per-view card in terms of the predictions in a long time. And I took some uh, underdogs and lost those picks. And then I took some favorites with Adesanya, but he fell. So it, again, in the UFC, you just never know how this thing is going to play out.
But all in all, UFC 293, a great night. Some hometown favorites won. The crowd was rocking before the final two fights. And then it just got quiet. It just got quiet. It, it was complete shock that Sean Strickland beat Israel Adesanya. I mean, it was just complete shock last night. And we're going to have to update the dude list. I mean, Adesanya is going to fall from number five, obviously, probably to nine or ten. Um, and that'll bring Volkanovski back into the top five. And he's been climbing forever. He probably should be higher, but he's not like my favorite fighter, but I got to give him respect. I like him well enough to put him on the do list, which is more about who are your favorite fighters and who do you believe is going to win too. It's like a combination of both of those things. Now, as we roll forward, we got Noche UFC coming up this week, the 18th straight week of fighting. Then nine, next week, after that will be the 19th straight week, and then we finally get a break because your boy is tired, man, trying to maintain uh, this schedule of fights every week, doing the predictions, the reactions. It's time for uh, a week off. But even with a week off, you still got Dana White's Contender Series uh, flying high on Tuesday nights. But this week's main event is a big one. At a UFC fight night, at Noche UFC, the rematch, Alexa Grasso versus Valentina Shevchenko. Let's get into that right now. In the women's flyweight division for the women's flyweight division title, we got the rematch. Alexa Grasso comes in at 16 and 3, takes on Valentina Shevchenko. She comes in at 23 and 4, and this goes down at Noche UFC. Both fighters 5'5. Five, five. Shevchenko's getting older, right? 35 years old. Grasso, 30, right in her prime. Shevchenko's kind of sliding downhill slowly. Shevchenko's got a one-inch reach advantage. She fights left-handed. Grasso fights right-handed. Now, what presented problems in the first fight was a striking by Grasso. 4.9 significant strikes per minute to 3.3 for Shevchenko over the career. Now, Shevchenko usually dominates the ground with nearly a takedown every round. But Grasso, despite the 61% takedown defense, uh, did a good job in the last fight. She gave up four takedowns, uh, but got up. And was able to reverse positions. Now, Shevchenko was leading the fight, right? 87 significant strikes to 59, four takedowns to none, but it was still Alexa Grasso who got the submission uh, by, uh, via rear, right? Before that, should be Vivian Araujo, Joanne Calderwood, aka Joanne Wood, Macy Barber, G. Yeon Kim. She hasn't lost since Carla Esparza back in 2019. Shevchenko, 72% takedown defense. Uh, before that, she beat, before Grasso, before the law, she beat Tyler Santos, Lauren Murphy, and Jessica Andrade and Jennifer Maya. So, you know, she's been in this situation before. Actually, no, I'm sorry, that was Nunez. So Shevchenko hasn't lost in a while uh, since Amanda Nunez back in 2017. And to me, this fight's going to play out a lot like the Nunez fight, where Shevchenko's sliding downhill, but she's going to pull together enough to get the victory here. I mean, she was winning the last fight by 28 significant strikes, four takedowns to none. Maybe you don't even go to the ground against Grasso. Maybe you just keep the fight standing. You know, you're dominating on the feet. You keep it there. I think Shevchenko will look at those stats. Her coaches will, for sure. They'll know the situation. No, no need to necessarily go to the ground where your opponent can switch positions pretty easily. So look for her to keep this fight standing and dominate in significant strikes and win three or four rounds out of five and get the belt back. That's what I think happens. It's all significant strikes. She gets the win, gets the title back here. In my opinion, women's flyweight division, Noche UFC. Yeah, so I, I think she's going to get the belt back. I mean, I think it's just going to happen. And it's going to be a raucous crowd, a celebration. Uh, I don't know if it's of Mexican history or whatever it is. But Noche UFC is, is a little bit different of a name because usually it's like UFC 293 or UFC Fight Night or UFC Mexico City or something like that. But this one, UFC is second. It's Noche UFC. And it's going to be another exciting night. And I'm kind of just ready for the next two weeks to get over with because then 294 and Hamza is just around the corner. But make no mistake, uh, Shevchenko will win this fight. She flipped the stats in the previous fight. And she'll do it again, but be smarter about going on the ground this time around. Now, as we jump into uh, 
the Q and A. You got Jumbroni saying, "I'm huge on Anton. Always fights. He seems extremely competitive. Or he gets taken down and finished. He's got to be working on that." Well, that didn't matter because he just got basically KO'd by Tyson Pedro, who looked dominant last night. Mo Larry Curley says, "Thanks for the breakdown. Short, concise, and to the point." Well done, Double C. Yes, sir. Much appreciated. Appreciate the love, man. You know, we get some love, we get some negativity, but all in all, uh, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Kenneth Bruner is back. Long time regular. Absolutely on point, Chris, as always, with the Wolf. Hamza's channel just dropped a new official training camp video for 294. He looks incredible going through a camp at 185. Coast is, getting, is going to get destroyed. We've not seen Hamza's best yet i mean yeah i mean listen me and bruner have been uh, on board together with hamza since day one since day well maybe day three but close enough to day one you dig space shogui something like that says nice i just hit back-to-back -back picks too i lost on blood diamond though i never want to see blood diamond in an octagon in my life <laughs> Yeah, when, it, when you think a guy's going to win and he costs you money, it's it's rough, man. You end up not liking that fighter anymore. That's for sure. And that seems to be what happened to Space. Monte Mitchell, I don't think Hamza can touch Adesanya. He barely beat Burns. Oh, man. He barely beat Burns because he cut so much weight, you know? They, they put this guy on the back burner for four years, and now it's going to be hard for him to make weight. So he's going to have to go get the middleweight title. Jack Peach says, Ty is due a win. Home turf, I smell a finish. Volkov is past his prime. Well, it didn't turn out that way because Volkov looked great last night. Definitely looked like he's past his prime. I don't know if he's a top five heavyweight, but he's definitely number six right now. And these are like the second and third level of fighters uh, in that situation. You know, you got some top guys. Like, I guess you could throw Stipe up there, but definitely Cyril Ghosn uh, and definitely Sergey Pavlovich. Number one contender should be fighting for the title. But John Jones is somehow um, getting to fight Stipe. It's just crazy. What has Stipe done? Got another comment. Hamza is overhyped and overrated. He will get exposed soon by Paulo Costa. And y'all think I'm crazy. There's really some people that believe this. And people are still upset at Hamza because of the Nate Diaz debacle. But when he dominates Costa and ends up getting the strap, people will change their tune uh, real quickly. And that's where... Uh, the Q&A led us today. A lot of good comments, man. We appreciate the feedback. You know, we're back on Facebook, so we'll, we'll start getting some comments there, I'm sure, uh, after a big night last night at UFC 293, but I didn't look at those just yet. But we're fired up, man. A lot of good things coming. A lot of big fights coming. Football is back. Looking forward to a week off so I can catch some football. I can't wait. We got the... The Little League game today, right? We're playing one of the best teams. So we'll see how it goes down, but we're doing that too. Constantly working, man. That's how it goes. I like it. Double C, baby. We're constantly working. But for now, this your boy Chris Cross. Hope you have a great day. God bless. Peace.